Hello, friends. I'm glad you're with me today. Let us begin with our responsive opening, which will be on your screen. O God, come to our assistance. O Lord, hasten to help us. Lord, we are clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be merciful to us. Friends, today I just wanted to mention several things. Uh, there are several uh, uh, prayer concerns. Uh, Betty Emery's great-granddaughter had surgery on Monday. We want to keep her in our prayers. Also, Flossie's friend Kay and her family uh, have been mentioned uh, previously. Uh, Kay's friend, Kay's, Kay's son-in-law, Kay's son-in-law died unexpectedly recently. Um, his wife, who is Kay's daughter, obviously, and their five children um, are, are left to, to remember him and to, to cherish his memories. Uh, but that's a di difficult thing. Also, we've been asked to remember Debbie Anderson, who will be relocating to Kentucky soon. Uh, as I understand it, uh, uh, Midge's place is sold now, and, uh, and so she'll be moving to Kentucky soon. And also, we uh, should remember Paul Cleveland, who has to have surgery. I believe it's this week as well. Um, the other thing I want to say is that today, uh, the last couple of Sundays, we've been reciting the Nicene Creed, and we have the Nicene uh, the banner for the Nicene Creed on the, uh, on the uh, wall here uh, in the front of the church. And, and I, I want you to, I, uh, these kinds of discussions can be difficult and I'm trying to do very simple things. And um, if you have questions or concerns, uh, please ask me about it. You can call me or you can, if you're in church on Sunday, you can talk to me about it on Sunday. Um, the doctrine of the Trinity, which grows out of this Nicene Creed, that three, the, you know, three and one, one and three business, it's ultimately something that cannot be completely understood. And, uh, and in some sense, it always has to be taken on faith. Uh, and and so, so this is a difficult thing, and I'm just touching the edge of it today as I talk about the, the beginnings of the of the creed, how it, uh, all, the, all the things going on that sort of brought this together and made them, uh, made them come together in a creed, in a, in a uh, council to try to figure this out. So, so uh, I'm not going to say very much about it. I've only got a couple of pages written out, some notes written out, and so there'll probably be big gaps in what, in what you're thinking. But please don't... Uh, now, as I said, if you have questions, ask me about them. Don't stew over it and don't, don't worry about, oh, oh my God, what is it? who is this guy and why is he doing this? Uh, just, just sort of hang in, please, and, and we'll try to get through it, and I'll try to, try to say as much as I can uh, in these short times. Um, so let us go ahead now with, uh, with our, our little service, and let's bow our heads in prayer. Take our lives, great God, and mold them into the image of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Forgive any waywardness in us and move us beyond our sin to start out afresh with Christ, who is the only way. Give peace to us, to all your children, and to the whole world for which Christ died. Amen. Our first hymn is two verses today of Christ has made the sure foundation. Uh, I'm sure you know it once I get once we get going. I hope you jump in and sing with me. Um, so let me get the note here. Christ is made the sure foundation, Christ the head and cornerstone, chosen of the Lord and precious. Binding all the church in one, holy Zion's help forever, and our confidence alone. Lord and honor to the Father, Lord and honor to the Son. Lord and honor to 
the Spirit, ever three and ever one, one in might and one in glory, while unending ages run. Our scripture reading today, our scripture reading today is from Philippians, from the fourth chapter, verses one through nine. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Listen to the word of God. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, to help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Don't, do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. May the Lord add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. Let's see if I've got all my notes here. In working on this idea of bringing you some information about the Nicene Creed and actually about all the kind of over, the, over time about all the creeds and the confessions, you know, not every confession of the church has a creed associated with it. Sometimes the, the creed, the Nicene Creed, is just a creed. It doesn't have a big document that surrounds us. The Apostles' Creed just has a creed. There's no big document around it. Uh, most of the others, uh, the, the, the Theological Declaration of Barman, the, the uh, Westminster Confession of Faith, uh, the Helvetic Confession, all of these that are, that are uh, statements of faith don't necessarily have a short creed associated with them. They all have something, something different to teach us. Uh, but uh, Nicaea and the Apostles' Creed are creeds in the sense that we understand them where we can say it's short enough that we can say something, uh, recite them during worship. So anyway, um, as a resource to help me understand this thing and, and as a resource to kind of help me explain this to you, I'm using a book called Presbyterian Creeds, A Guide to the Book of Confessions by Jack Rogers. It was first published in 1985 and it was revived, revised in 1991 when the Presbyterian Church added the Brief Statement of Faith, which was the, the next to last creed that's been included into the Book of Confessions. Uh, for, a, for a few weeks, at least for the next three, I, I guess, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Nicene Creed because I thought that since we're reciting it, it would be nice to know a little background, a little something about it. So. Here's what we can do today. Uh, I will confess to you right now, I don't know that much about any of the creeds, any of the confessions in our book of confessions. Uh, I probably shouldn't admit that to you or say that out loud. Uh, we're supposed to, one of the things that, that pastors and uh, or ministers of the word and sacrament when we're ordained and elders and deacons is that we'll be gu guided by the book of confessions. Uh, and most of us have not read much about it. I know some of the basics. I know some of the things that are in there. Uh, but I don't know detail word for word, you know, if you know what I mean. So anyway, uh, 
And that's why I have, a, have this book. Uh, I've got this book by D Dr. Rogers, which gives us some guidance and gives me some guidance to try to explain to you what, what it is we're doing. Uh, here's a broad outline about the Nicene Creed. It was first proposed in the fourth century in the, of the Christian era, in the, in the 300s, uh, but was not officially approved until the fifth century in the Christian era, that is in the 400s. Most people probably think that the Christian faith and along with it the Christian theology and practice have always been more or less the same. That from the time that Jesus ascended into heaven to our modern times, we've had this sort of body of knowledge, uh, we've had this understanding of things and, and that's really not true. Uh, just like the Bible came together over, over years and years, the Old Testament first and then the New Testament came over centuries to get to its final form, so theology has been something that has, has grown, has developed, has changed over time until we get to this point where we are today. And even now, it's still, we're, you know, people are still working around the edges of these things. We're still trying to understand things. I think that's something about our, about our human minds is that we're curious and we're always trying to figure out or, or figure out some details we don't understand. And let's just be honest at the very beginning that we can't understand everything about God. We can't know everything about God, about Jesus, about the Holy Spirit because, because we just can't even imagine what, what that is really like, what the substance of God, what the mind of God is truly capable of. You know, since we believe that God out of, uh, that God created everything out of nothing. You know? So it's just, it's something that we have trouble dealing with. So anyway, uh, until the fourth century in the Christian era, as I said, when this creed began to be written, uh, as I said, just for one thing that I have, think I've mentioned in church before, uh, Christians were mostly, before that creed, before that creed began, began to be formed, most Christians were pacifists. They didn't fight. Uh, until the fourth century, uh, they didn't fight in the wars for the, of the Roman Empire because this is still the Roman Empire that we're talking about when Nicaea was, was developed. Uh, they didn't take up arms and fight against their persecutors. Uh, it wasn't until the Emperor Constantine, who here uh, in about in the early 300s, 310, 315, something like that, uh, uh, sort of consolidated his power and control of the whole empire. Uh, by then his, his, uh, his uh, capital was no longer in Rome uh, as it was in the, in the before Christian era, the before Christ era. Uh, uh, it was, had been moved to what is now Istanbul, which was named Constantinople after Constantine. Uh, the Emperor Constantine called the council, and he was converted to Christianity during one of his last wars, last battles to sort of consolidate power, uh, and then becoming a warrior, becoming warlike, became okay. So. So that's just one thing that's changed over, over the years. So anyway, now let's go on. Uh, Constantine the Great called a council of the church uh, that met in 325 of the Christian era in Nicaea, which was south of Constantinople a little bit along the sea coast uh, in what is now Turkey. 318 bishops and numerous theologians and, and other scholars gathered to discuss the differences in understandings about the relationship of Jesus Christ to God and to humanity. This is not a simple task, as there are many other details that had to be addressed also, such as the person and work of the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit fits into this whole, whole thing as well. But the main difference in discussion dealt with the divinity and the humanity of Jesus. For probably two centuries before this council, there had been discussions about Jesus' nature as God and as a human, how we were supposed to understand this. Uh, what, what forced this, this uh, what was the, the events 
that uh, came, led up to this council, uh, a priest named Arius, who became very popular and, and became very well known in the ancient world. Arius believed, as many before him, that Christ was subordinate to the Father. In other words, that uh, the Son was less than the, was less than God. Uh, at the other <coughs> at the other end of the spectrum was Bishop Alexander and his chief theologian, whose name was Athanasius, who stood strongly and resolutely for the doctrine that God the Father and God the Son shared the same nature or substance, however you want to de de define those things. Uh, as I said, these are difficult things to understand and even difficult things to explain. And this doesn't give you very much to start with, but it gives you something to say, here's why they came together, and here's what the discussions were going to be about. So with that little bit, with that little bit, let's move on in our time of worship together. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Almighty God, who in your wisdom has so ordered our earthly life that we must walk by faith and not by sight, grant us such faith in you that in spite of all the things that are beyond our understanding, we may trust in your heavenly care and may we be, in, be strengthened by your assurance that you are always with us. Heavenly Father, we remember Betty Emery's great-granddaughter as she recovers from surgery. We remember Flossie's friend Kay and her daughter and their family as they mourn, as they mourn the loss of a, of a husband and a father and a son-in-law. We pray for Debbie Anderson as she begins a, a new life in a new place and pray for her for her happiness and for her contentment as she, as she goes there. Lord, we also pray for Paul Cleveland, for his surgery and for, for his recovery. Heavenly Father, we, we lift all other people as well that each of us knows, that each of us prays for, that each of us is concerned with. Even as we think their names, let those, let those thoughts be given to you as prayers. Eternal God and Father, help, help and trust the past. Help us entrust the past to your mercy, the present to your love, and the future to your wisdom. We ask all of this through you, O Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our last hymn is Go With Us, Lord. Go with us, Lord, and guide the way through this and every coming day that in your spirit strong and true our lives may be our gift to you go with me lord and guide the way through this and every coming day that in your spirit strong and true my life may be my gift to you. May the, lay, may, the, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. The Lord's name be praised. Amen. Thank you, friends. Go with God. <laughs>